Welcome to the Strength for the Day podcast, which is a daily Bible study with Dennis Fountain. We hope this time together will be challenging, sharpening, uplifting, encouraging, and strengthening to your Christian walk. Thank you for joining us, and we pray you are helped through today's study. Hey, good morning, and welcome to Strength for the Day. Um, I am, uh, I think this morning I should probably say like surfs up or something because uh, I've got a Hawaiian hat on and a Hawaiian shirt, and uh, a friend of mine just told me that it looks like I should be in Hawaii, and I agreed with him. And so uh, if you think that we should be in Hawaii right now, all of us just watching this, uh, then just comment and let me know that you think we should all go to Hawaii, and then um, maybe you know someone who could pay for our trip, and then we could all go, all right? So just throw that out. No, I'm excited to be here this morning and looking forward to our time together as we close up the book of First Peter. Now today, before we dive in, again, the context of Peter, that Peter is writing to a group of people who many of them are suffering, and they're not suffering because they've broken the law, they're suffering because they are followers of Jesus, and they're suffering because of their faith in Jesus Christ. And so many of them have lost houses and land and jobs and even loved ones who have been uh, put to death for the faith in for their faith in Jesus Christ, and so we need to know about that. We need to remember that the context is suffering. Now, why? Because what we're about to read today is a great um, a great challenge in suffering. When you and I go through suffering, what we tend to do is we, we can tend to have this mindset of this just isn't worth it. Throw in the towel. I'm done. I quit. And Peter knows that. And so he writes to the believers and he writes these words. Now, we've already talked yesterday in our last episode about the choice to be clothed in humility. Pride would say, why am I getting this? Why do I deserve this? Humility says, God, I trust you. And we've talked about that. But notice what Peter writes next in verse number eight. Be sober. That word sober means to be awake and alert and be vigilant. Vigilant means to be um, to be watchful, to pay attention. Why? Because your adversary, the devil, walks about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Hey, you're going through suffering right now, but be awake, be alert, and be watchful. Be aware that the devil is out to get you. Man, the devil would love to use this trial and this suffering. He would love to use it to get you away from God. He would love to use it to get you, like Job's wife said to him, just curse God and die. The devil would love to get you to that point. So what does he say? Hey, be aware of this. Know that the devil is a roaring lion, is seeking whom he may devour. Hey, he is out to destroy your life. So instead, be aware of that and resist him. Being steadfast in the faith, grounded in the faith. Make sure that your faith is strong because when your faith is strong, you are able to resist the devil. You're able to resist his onslaught and his attack knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. So, hey, you're not the only one going through this. Yeah, hey, believer who's being persecuted for your faith, you are not the only one that's struggling. You're not the only one that's suffering. Here's what Peter writes. Be aware that the devil would love to use this time. He would love to get you to be isolated and to say uh, that you're the only one. Sorry, I just realized this is all cattywampus. Maybe it's not. It might not be crooked. It might just be my vision. If it is, I'm sorry. But here's what, here's what Peter writes. He says to the, the reader, hey, you are going through suffering, yes, but you're not it. You're not the only one. Because what we like to do is we like to have like Elijah and Elisha when they went through suffering. Remember uh, uh, the one, I think, I'm pretty sure it was Elijah who said, I'm the only prophet left. Man, there's all these prophets of Baal and all these prophets that Jezebel has got, and I'm the only one left. And the Lord said to him, you're not the only one left. Man, buddy, there's a lot of other people who are following me. 
When we go through suffering, we can have that as our mindset. Man, I'm the, I'm the only person that's going through this. I'm the only person that's struggling. I'm the only person that, that, they, that is being challenged with this. And here's what Peter is writing. You're not the only person. Hey, get your focus off of you and get it onto the Lord. Why? Because the devil would love to use this situation to cause you to doubt God and get you away from God. Know that all of that there are others who are going through this with you. So resist God, or excuse me, resist the devil. Uh, flee toward God. Flee from the devil. Resist the devil, be steadfast in your faith, and know that these sufferings that you experience are also experienced by others in this world. Verse 10, but may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish you, strengthen you, and settle you. To him be glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. The thought there is you can trust, you and I can trust when we go through suffering that God is working. He is going to make us perfect. That word perfect means complete. He's going to complete the work. He's going to establish you, help you to be founded. He's going to strengthen you in your struggling. And then I love that last part. He can settle you. To settle, to cause to calm, to bring into your life that peace that passes all understanding. Hey, believer, as you and I go through this life and suffer in trials and have challenges as we face these things, may we know that the devil, he is out to get us, but the Lord is there to strengthen us. So resist the devil and turn, trust in the strength of God. We'll come back to that. Here's verse number 12. <clears throat> By Sylvanus or Sylvanus or Silas, our faithful brother, as I consider him, I have written to you briefly. So Peter is writing, helping Silas, helping him, uh, exhorting and testifying that this is the true grace of God in which you stand. She who's in Babylon, the church in Babylon, elect together with you, greets you, and so does Mark or John Mark, my son. Greet one another with a kiss of love. Peace be to you all who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. So there, uh, I think even again, Peter reminding the reader, hey, there are other believers in this. The church of Babylon's moving forward. I'm writing to you. Sylvanus is writing this and helping you. And remember, there are others around you. So peace to all who are in Christ. But I want to go back just for a minute to that thought, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. I said just a minute ago that we need to remember the context of this chapter of this book is suffering. So here's what Peter says. You're going through suffering, but be aware that during times of trial, the devil is on attack. I want to remind you today that if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, the devil hates you and he is out to destroy your life. He would love nothing more than to see you become a casualty of the Christian faith. And there are a lot of people out there who have forgotten that the devil is out to destroy them. He wants to destroy your family. He hates you and your kids and your grandkids and your marriage and your church. He hates the fact that you want to be a Christian in the Word of God. He hates the fact that you are watching this today. The devil hates the fact that I'm recording this today uh, because he knows the power. The devil knows the power of the Word of God in our lives. And so I want to encourage you as we wrap up the book of First Peter, I really want us to, um, to kind of focus in on just a couple of closing thoughts, and that is this. Our suffering, your suffering, your trials, my trials in life, hey, God allows them. And yeah, God may not bring them and say, all right, I'm going to give you cancer. God, I don't, I don't think God works in that way. Um, I'm not going to say he does not. I just, I believe that God is a God of grace and love. And he is a God of judgment, but I believe that most of our trials and suffering God allows. So here's what I want us to be encouraged with. Kind of went back to it a couple days ago. Number one, as you and I go through trials, know that you can trust God. 
I can trust God with any trial that comes my way. Number two, know that I can have joy from God. No matter what my trial, no matter what my circumstance, I can trust God, I can have joy from God. Number three, number three is simply this, that I can resist Satan and run to God. Resist Satan and run to God. Hey, the devil doesn't need to win when you and I are in a trial. I can trust God, I can have joy from God, and I can resist Satan and run to God in the midst of my trial. And the last thing that I wanna encourage you with is this, in all of our trials, may we ask God to help us point to Him. I can point to God. So no matter what situation you're facing, four thoughts I give you as we close the book of 1 Peter. Trust God, find joy in God, resist the devil and run to God, and choose in your trials to point to God. Monday, in our next episode, we will pick up the book of 2 Peter. We'll be in it for five days, and I know it'll be a help to us. Have a great weekend, and we will see you on Monday.